You've done all your preliminary work on setting up your GAP RC Vapor D6 and now you need to set it up in Betaflight and activate that 04. So, shall we? So, unsurprisingly, the first job is going to be to plug it into a USB and there's a little hole, nice. And conveniently in the side here, the only thing is, this USB is a little bit thick for it. Okay, so we tried a little bit of brute force there and uh, I think we've managed to get it in. It is, like I say, quite tight though. So uh, we'll do the setup while we can. Let's just check and make sure it's connected to Betaflight because sometimes you can have a light on, but if it's not, right, okay, it is. So let's just move this camera and we'll go into the setup. Now I did forget a vital step actually. So before we go into beta flight, so let's just close that down. We need to add our bind phrase into ELRS. So in order to power the ELRS receiver underneath, we need to plug in into a LiPo. And I'll move the LiPo right next, oh sorry, we'll move the drone right next to the PC. And we'll just wait a second for it to go into Wi-Fi mode. And once it does, we can then do the necessary. Okay, so this should now pop up any second. And the reason why it's so important to make sure you don't put your props on yet is because we've now got a LiPo plugged into this and the drone is powered. The worst thing that could happen is, it obviously, in a, especially in a small room, it could go full throttle and, um, you know, you're gonna cause serious damage and potential serious injury as well. So don't put the props on until you're ready to go outside with it. Now, this should any second now pop up. Let's have a look. So we are in Wi-Fi mode, so let's just close that down a second and see if the uh, ELRS network pops up, and there it is. So we just click connect. And it should automatically take us instantly into the page because we've done this before. We've got all the setup videos on this. I'm just wondering if we need to go a little bit closer to the PC. popped it on top of the PC. There we go. So the good thing is in here, it tells you the firmware that you're on. And it also tells you the name of the receiver. So if you ever did need to flash it, and we are going to have a tutorial later on, on how to flash your ELRS. But we can see all we need to do on this particular one is just add our bind phrase. And we've done this bind phrase so many times now, haven't we? That it should be really easy for us to do. So if we just now hit save. Telemetry connected. There we go. So we are now connected. So we can now go into beta flight and we can now change all our, our settings, add our switches and get this drone ready to get up in the air and rip. Okay, so having a look at beta flight for the first time, we can see that we've got our MSP set up, so we can have um, our OSD, so that's great. We've got our serial set up, so we've got our ELRS receiver set up, and we've got GPS, and we've also got ESC telemetry set up as well, so brilliant. Don't change anything in here, it's all done for you. Moving to the next page, the configuration page, the most important thing is that we set the arming angle to 180 degrees, but thankfully GEPRC have already done that for us, so that makes our life easier. We make sure that air mode's on and that GPS and OSD is on. Nothing else to do in this screen, they've done it all for us. Power, we don't need to up this to 4.35, they've actually upped it to 4.3 anyway, but um, you're not gonna be using an LIHV on a 6S. Failsafe, it's set to drop. So it's not, GPS rescue is not turned on by default, which is great by G, sorry, by GEPRC. Um, it's important that pilots understand how GPS rescue works before enabling it. Because if you were to press GPS rescue in the wrong circumstances, instead of your quad coming home to you, it would just drop potentially in the middle of the ocean. So it is really, really good that they've done that. So I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna enable it and then I'm going to disable sanity checks, which means I can take off an arm on less than eight satellites. If you enabled GPS rescue and didn't enable 
allow arm in without sanity checks and you're wondering why your drone won't arm in your house it's because you haven't enabled arming without sanity checks sorry i was holding off speaking because i knew it was going to beep as soon as i did that moving into receiver now we're probably going to have to change our channel mapping here let's check yep so we need to change ours anybody who watched the elrs for beginners tutorial will know that we have to change it to RETA because that is the channel map set up on my controller. I can change that on my controller, but then I'd have to change every single drone I already own. It's just not worth the effort. So that's all working. So then the other thing to do now is have a look at the modes that are set up. So we've got arm, angle, and beeper. So arming is on one, which is exactly where I want it. Okay, so once we're in our switches, we need to set up our switches. So my camera cut off then, so I'm back. So we need to change angle mode to AUX3, GPS to AUX3, and then buzzer to AUX2, turtle mode to AUX2, and then we need to change pre-arm to... AUX6. So we'll hit save on that and then we'll go back up and we'll just rearrange them how we need them. Angle mode. Buzzer active. Angle mode. Buzzer active. Angle mode. Angle mode. Buzzer active. Angle mode. Active. I don't know why angle mode is lighting up there. That's a bit weird. There we go. And those are set to that switch. And that's it. You've set up your switches successfully in Betaflight. Easy as that. So we'll just check now the OSD and then we'll go in, yep, that's all set up. And then we'll go in and we'll have a look at the, uh, sorry, I've gone to the complete wrong part. We'll go in and have a look at the pitch tuner of this so that you've everyone's got a copy of this in case you lose it in the future. We can see this is how the, the PIDs pages is set up. If you need a copy of this, just pause the video. And this is how the filters are set up. And again, if you need a copy of this, just pause the video. The video will remain here for the rest of eternity. Now, for anybody who wants to copy my rates, I'll show you. So that's what it's set to as standard on this particular drone. And then we'll put my rates in. So for pitch and roll, I have 1400 on a five inch, 1800 on a three inch, and two and a half inch and then on your I set it to 1200 with center stick sensitivity set to 10 and that's my rates if you ever fancied copying them I would always recommend that you find your own rates because it's such a personal thing but ultimately this set of videos to help yourself so if you need that help and guidance there it is so we can now move our control so now we've done all that and we've got all that ready, we're going to get our lipo and we're going to plug our lipo in and we're going to open Consumer Drones 2 DJI Assist. So we plugged in and we've got the USB into the O4 Pro, not the flight controller. That's going to pop up and it's going to show us any videos we've taken. It's a brand new drone, so there is none. So it's DJI Assistant Consumer Drones 2 that we need. It's going to pop up any second now. And because we've updated the firmware, it should now instantly give us the prompt, you need to activate this 04 Air Unit Pro. And it still isn't doing, which may suggest the GEP RC have already activated it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and grab my goggles 
and I'm going to bind it to my goggles and I'm going to find out if that is the case or not. So let's be back in one second. Now it's obviously one of those days today because the SIM tool that came with this from Geparsi I don't seem to be able to find in the box. Um, and I have no idea why. So what we're going to need to do is we are going to need to press the bind button on the 04 Pro. Let me just move some of this stuff out of the way. So the bind button is here. You're going to need to push something in there. So I've got a little screw, whatever. So just give me one second while I just do that off camera. But basically, you need to plug it in to a lipo and then you need to press that bind button with that SIM tool that I appear to have lost. Okay, so now you can see that we've got a red light flash in there, which means it's in bind mode. What we need to do now is turn on our goggles. So these are these are now on. Excuse me, they're out of focus. If you hold down the power button, don't press it twice like you normally would. Just hold it down and it'll start to beep. And you'll see in a second, there we go. So it's now connected. I'm just gonna look in the screen and see if it does need to be activated or not. And it doesn't. So I can see in here that it's not saying connect to DJI Fly to fly outside. And it's also not saying activate air unit, which means GEPRC have already done this in the factory for us. Whilst I'm here, I am going to change my camera settings because it's warm in here and cold outside. So I go down to camera, I change it to 16 by 9. That's personal preference. Video quality, I am going to go with 4K 60. Camera field of view, I'm going to go with ultra wide. Recording stabilization, I'm going to go with on, unless it's needed for a professional reason. I auto ISO limit I set to 100. I don't let it go any higher than that. If I'm flying in a situation like at night time or indoors where I do need to change it, I will change it. Um, make sure that we've got an advanced camera settings, camera view record is on. Auto takeoff is on. What I'll do actually, I'll plug in a, um, a mobile phone and I'll do this as a setup video just to make it a bit easier because we also go to minus one on noise reduction and minus one on sharpness. We need D log M. to take the camera out of auto mode by pushing up so i saw 100 shutter speed again we'll set it where it should be we'll need to change this because we're not using a nd filter but we'll set it to double the frame rate which is one by 120 white balance i normally have set to 5600 so i'm just pressing across Auto ISO limit on here, set to 100, and everything else is now set as we set it. And as far as I'm concerned now, that is all set up for me. Brilliant. We are now ready to go. The last thing to do is just install the props. So just one final thing to do before we actually uh, put the props on and just make sure that we are connected properly and that we can arm the motors. We can do that safely because we haven't got any props on. You may experience some uh, weird behavior if you arm it and uh, raise the throttle without the props on. What that is likely to cause is the drone to continue to accelerate because it's trying to fight the pid loop. People have been getting confused about this in the past couple of days, so I just thought I'd mention it. But that is then set up, so let's go and grab the props. Okay, so the next thing to do, or the final thing to do, is to put the props on. I'm just going to clip this microphone here, so you may hear. It may not be as uh, 
fully out as it has been. And we're going to get our HQ MC, MCK props. And we're going to get them because they are in channel colours. Now, the configuration that we can see here is that this drone is props in, which means not a massive fan of it. It means that if mud is slung, it's going to sling it towards the camera, whereas in props out, it'll sling it out away from the camera. Um, it doesn't change the flight characteristics, and we'll have a video giving some more detail about props in versus props out. But just for now, just know that this is props in. So what we need to do is we need to grab ourselves a couple of props that are the right orientation. So in order for it to be props in, it's going to be that way and that way at the front. And then we need ones that are that way and that way at the back. And that's how we're going to install the props. I'm wondering where Boy Wonder has placed my prop tool. I say Boy Wonder, it's me, but uh, he got a little shout out there, so he'll love it. Oh, here it is. So get yourself something like this. It, it does make life a lot easier. Let me try and move my fat hand out of the way. So that one goes on like that. And then this one goes on like that. Thankfully, GEP RC, similar to iFly, really helpful including these on the motor. If you do receive a quad that doesn't have these directional arrows on the motor, you'd need to go into beta flight and go into the motors tab to see whether it's props in or props out. But Gap RC have saved us a job. And let's be fair, when setting up a quad, it does take time. So any time saved is more time for flying. More time for flying is nothing but a good thing. I'm a fan of these MCK props. They didn't make a lot of noise though. As I can attest because I was at a abandoned colliery not too long ago. Not too long ago at all. Um, but the noise that echoed all around the site we've probably woken the dead but hey ho we've got the channel colors so we don't care massive shout out to your fpv for sending these to me gaff and the team over there are incredible people they're not the biggest store in the uk so do support them if you can they've been really good to me um, and i'm more than happy to give a shout out to anybody who helps this channel and Gaff and the team have really helped. So we're ready to go. Now I'm going to do something that I tell you would never ever to do and I'm going to just arm it with the props on. No I'm not. Go and fly it. Let's go. <laughs> 